the world's greatest detective. It's a title Batman has had for 80 years, mostly because he's looking cool brooding over crime scenes in the rain. But if we look at his methods through the lens of actual science, the reality is brutal. Bruce Wayne might be a martial arts genius, but his detective skills are a forensic dumpster fire. If you applied real world standards to his actions, he wouldn't be catching criminals, he'd be the reason they walk free. Today we're breaking down five scientific failures that prove the Dark Knight is actually the world's worst investigator. It starts with the fundamental law of forensics, Lokerd's exchange principle. In 1910, Edmund Lokerd formulated the concept that every contact leaves a trace. You cannot enter a space without leaving something behind or taking something with you. This is how we catch killers, by finding the microscopic fibers, pollen, or skin cells they didn't know they dropped. Now, look at the bat suit. It's a forensic nightmare. Real crime scene investigators wear sterile Tavex suits that make them look like giant marshmallows. Batman wears a textured cape that acts like a forensic Swiffer. Think about his night before he hits the crime scene. He's been hugging rusty gargoyles and wading through sewer water with Killer Croc. When he lands at the murder scene and dramatically swoops that cape around, he is effectively shaking a dirty rug over the evidence. He's raining down pollen, soot, and sewer pathogens directly onto the victim. Science relies on finding the one thing that doesn't belong, but Batman introduces thousands of things that don't belong every time he moves. Real CSIs use double-gloved latex. Batman uses armored gauntlets designed to punch people through brick walls. Every time he touches a surface, he isn't finding clues. He's shedding exotic Wayne Tech polymers. If a real forensic team came in after him, they wouldn't find the killer's DNA. They'd find a contaminated slurry of military-grade carbon fiber and bat dander. He isn't just failing to find the evidence, he is actively erasing it. And once he's ruined the physical scene, he tries to analyze what's left, which leads us to a technological impossibility that movies love to ignore. This brings us to the second massive failure, and it's one that Hollywood has conditioned us to accept without question. The lie of instant forensics. We've all seen the scene. Batman taps a button on his cowl, his lenses glow blue, and he enters detective mode. He scans a mysterious puddle of goo on the floor, and a little HUD pop-up instantly reads, Compound identified, Joker Venom, Variant B. In the real world, this is scientifically impossible. It's a fantasy trope known as the CSI effect. To identify an unknown liquid, you need gas chromatography mass spectrometry, or GCMS. This machine is the size of a photocopier and about as portable as a fridge. It physically separates chemicals by pushing them through a microscopic tube, a process that takes an hour per run. Batman doing this in three seconds by glaring at the liquid violates the laws of physics. It gets worse with DNA. In the movies, Batman scans a blood drop and it instantly gets a name. In reality, you need the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. It's a biological photocopier that heats and cools DNA to copy it. Even with the FBI's best rapid DNA tech, this takes 90 minutes. If Batman is standing in an alley waiting for a DNA match to find the Riddler, he's going to be standing there for an hour and a half, just awkwardly staring at a wall. But he doesn't wait. He punches someone immediately, and this suggests he is acting on incomplete or non-existent data. This rush to judgment introduces a dangerous psychological element called confirmation bias, particularly with fingerprints. We tend to think of fingerprint matching as a computer saying, match found. But that's not how the automated fingerprint identification system works. This computer provides a list of potential candidates who have similar ridge patterns. A human examiner then has to look at the candidates and decide if there is a match. Studies have shown that when examiners are given context like, we know this guy's the killer, we just need the print to match, their error rates skyrocket. Batman is the definition of a biased examiner. He is hunting a specific villain. He wants the evidence to fit his theory. Scientifically, this means he is likely forcing matches where none exist, leading him to beat up the wrong henchman while the real criminal gets away. So, Batman has contaminated the crime scene and relied on impossible imaginary chemistry to identify a suspect. Now, he has to find them. This leads to the most famous tactic, the interrogation. We all know the drill. Batman grabs a thug, dangles him off the edge of a 30-story building, and screams, swear to me. The thug, terrified, spills the beans on the Joker's location. It's dramatic, it's iconic, and scientifically, it is almost guaranteed to yield false information. 
Batman's entire methodology is based on the idea that fear acts as a truth serum. But neuroscience tells us that fear is actually a truth inhibitor. To understand why, look at the HPA axis. When a man dressed as a giant bat smashes through a skylight, your brain hits the panic button. It dumps a massive cocktail of cortisol and adrenaline into your blood. This is fight or flight. Critically, this chemical flood shuts down the prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that handles logic and memory. When you are in mortal terror, your brain isn't prioritizing the recall of a license plate number. It's prioritizing not dying. By dangling a man off a roof, Batman is chemically lobotomizing his witness. Research shows that extreme duress produces compliance, not accuracy. A terrified human enters a state of hypersuggestibility. They will say anything to make the fear stop. If Batman shouts, where is the bomb, and the thug doesn't know, the thug won't say, I don't know. He will say, it's in the library, or on the moon. Just please put me down. Real-world interrogation experts, like those in high-level intelligence or homicide, use the PEACE model. Preparation and planning, engage and explain, account, closure, and evaluation. It relies on building rapport. You get the most accurate information when the subject feels safe enough to talk, not when they are hyperventilating from adrenaline toxicity. By relying on terror, Batman is filling his investigation with noise and lies. He isn't extracting the truth, he is extracting a survival reflex. He gets a name, speeds off to that location, and likely finds nothing, because the information was born out of panic, not memory. So his forensics are imaginary, and his interrogation destroys the subject's ability to recall facts. This leaves him with one final option, technology. Turning an entire city into a surveillance state creates a physics problem that even Bruce Wayne's billions can't solve. In the Dark Knight, Lucius Fox builds a sonar system using every phone in Gotham to create a real-time 3D map of the city. It's the ultimate panopticon. To render a live, high-fidelity 3D map of an entire metropolis based on acoustic data requires exabytes of throughput per second. The latency alone would make it useless for a fistfight. But the hardware isn't even the biggest problem. The wetware is. The human brain. Cognitive load theory says the human brain can only track about four to seven things at once. This is the cocktail party effect. You can focus on one conversation, but not all of them. Batman is trying to monitor a city of millions. Even with his AI, he is the bottleneck. In Gotham, the noise is millions of people arguing, watching TV, and honking horns. Without a godlike AI, he would drown in false positives. Plus, the thermodynamics are impossible. A server farm processing that much audio-visual data would generate heat like a small star. The Batcave would need a cooling system rivaling a nuclear plant just to stop stalactites from melting. Instead of fighting crime, Batman would be stuck in the cave, resetting routers and sweating through his suit while the Riddler robs a bank. But let's assume he ignores the noise and captures the bad guy. This leads to the final catastrophic failure. It's not physics, it's the law. We need to talk about chain of custody. In a criminal trial, the prosecution must prove exactly who held a piece of evidence from the moment it was found until it arrived in court. There has to be a documented, unbroken paper trail. If there is a 10-minute gap where nobody knows where the murder weapon was, the defense attorney moves to have it thrown out. Batman is the gap. He has no badge number, no case log, and no accountability. When he drops a bag of evidence on the commissioner's desk, legally, that is just a bag of trash a guy in a costume found. But it gets worse. There's a legal doctrine called fruit of the poisonous tree. It states that if the source of your evidence is obtained illegally, then everything you find because of that evidence is also tainted and inadmissible in court. The exclusionary rule exists specifically to stop law enforcement from breaking the law to enforce it. Batman does not have search warrants. He kicks doors down. He hacks private servers. He breaks into homes. Every single one of these actions is a Fourth Amendment violation. Let's say Batman breaks into the Penguin's office illegally and finds a ledger proving money laundering. That ledger is the poisonous tree. Because he found it illegally, the police cannot use it. But they also cannot use any bank accounts they find because of the ledger. They can't use the witnesses they find because of the bank accounts. The entire case rots from the inside out. By finding the evidence first, Batman effectively salts the earth, making it impossible for actual police to use it later. Imagine the trial of the Joker. His public defender stands up and says, Your Honor, the only reason the police found this bomb is because a vigilante dangled my client off a roof and tortured him without reading him his Miranda rights. The judge would have no choice. Case dismissed. 
mistrial declared. The Joker walks free. By operating outside the law, Batman ensures that the law cannot touch the people he catches. He isn't fighting crime. He is immunizing criminals against prosecution. So let's review the resume of the world's greatest detective. He enters a crime scene and destroys the microscopic evidence with his suit. He relies on chemical analysis that takes days, not seconds, leading to false arrests. He uses interrogation techniques that biologically force victims to lie. He builds surveillance systems that would paralyze him with data overload. And finally, he gathers evidence in a way that guarantees it will be thrown out of court. Batman doesn't solve crime. He creates a chaotic environment where the truth is buried under contaminated scenes and inadmissible evidence. He is, scientifically and legally, the most efficient saboteur of justice in history. If you want to know which fictional detective actually respects the scientific method, let us know in the comments and hit subscribe for that breakdown.